Hello and welcome back to the Battle of Central Europe here on Hefla TV's second hitbox channel. I'm Grandis V and I'll be joined by Mike Lors for this best of two between House of Gamers and Album Sheet. House of Gamers just off of a 0-2 loss versus Commanda and Album Sheet off of a 2-0 win over Lions in the first stage of today. So, um, I hope that these are some good games, although they have opposite, um, excuse me, records in the tournament so far. I think both of them are fairly even footing so we'll just have to see how they approach this game yeah everyone who is chilling in this channel knows that album sheet performed pretty decently against the lions in the last set of course outside of lag issues what we're not gonna worry about that for this second set hopefully that's not an issue but uh house of gamers i did not catch the first one i know that it was or their first game between themselves and commanda uh, as we were casting during that time, it was a very long one, and I think they just barely lost that one out. And the second one was another one where they got they got pretty far, but they just didn't quite break enough of the high ground. So House of Gamers, they performed admirably, but unfortunately that doesn't get you wins. So they are certainly not feeling too good about that, but uh, I mean, they are performing well enough, I think, to take down Album Sheet, but it is certainly going to be hard. We see Visage being banned out, and I don't believe... House of Gamers Don't played a like Drow Ranger school. in their last two games versus Commando. I think actually Commando were playing Drow, although I might be thinking of a different game. Yeah, I think that's fair. Although Visage, he's a pretty scary hero, but only when paired with that Drow Ranger. So it's kind of a double ban, but at the same time, a not ban. It'll leave the Brewmaster in the pool, as well as the Razor, which House of Eight Gamers will pick up. Here, I expect Scarath Mage to be the next choice for House of Gamers, as Death Prophet is probably the other one of those four that's already taken out. Yeah, one of them is going to take Skyrath, the other one is going to take Ogre, and things are going to look very normal. And if Album Sheet don't pick up Ogre, well, I, I'm not even going to finish that sentence because I don't even need to. They pick Ogre. <laughs> yeah, it's fairly standard here coming out from both of these teams, although it's a lot of fun to watch teams experiment. These are the tried and true picks. These four heroes are very accustomed to be seeing in these slots. Yeah, and if you're going to pick up something weird, then generally picking them up in the first two spots is not really going to be what you want to do. So we'll see if they actually do veer off into something a little bit different. House of Gamers, with the Razor Skyrath Mage Game opening, it go. is pretty strong. They do want to go for a Draw Ranger. Of course, now the Visage ban yeah, is kind of sense. hurting them, so you have a little bit of a weird situation there for House of Gamers, but it is still in the cards for them. For Album Sheet, they have two melee heroes, so things are going to get a little bit more restricted as far as their picks are concerned, but you know, these two heroes can function decently, even though they are both melee, as Brewmaster in the split form doesn't really care about those large AoE skills, and Ogre Magi tends to keep his distance anyway. Yeah, and even when he's not um, keeping his distance, he's a fairly tanky hero as well, so survives longer than most. Next bands coming out from Album Cheat as well as House of Gamers, we're going to see Viper, Centaur, and Necrophos taken out of the pool. Um, Centaur and Viper, I can definitely understand. Necrophos is, I don't know, still a little bit of a gray area for me. He definitely has a spot, but I'm not sure if it's in this game. Uh, Medusa also taken out by House of Gamers, so quite a lot of core hate in the next banding stage. As far as other supports, House of Gamers, if they want to go with a safe pick, they could pick up either the Earthshaker or Sand King here. Yeah, you can't really go wrong with either one of them. House of Gamers, they're mostly just concerned with Album Sheet's synergy with the Bloodlust, which is really the only thing they can be scared about. As generally, Brewmaster is perfectly self-sufficient, doesn't really need to anyone go. to help him out at any stage of the game, really. Uh, Ogre Magi even gets just Five minor seconds. synergy with the Bloodlust, so I like the bans from House of Gamers. Album Sheet, I mean, taking out the Centaur is certainly very dangerous to the Skyrath Mage. The Necrophos is maybe just the hero that they don't want to play around. Again, with the Skyrath Mage, Amplify, things get really damn... Uh, Things get really dangerous when you're talking about that much magical damage. So it's nice, safe, and secure bands. And then House of Gamers, while well, they pick up a Slark, it is a hero that Album Sheet are going to have to get the jump on. And right now, they don't really have many great heroes for surprising a Slark. I mean, Ogre Magi can do it if you catch him with an Invis Rune or through Fog or something like that. But simply running up to him and Fire Blasting isn't going to cut it. Yeah, definitely not. If you're that slow on the initiation, it's very easy for Slark to get off the Dark Pact, and although they have a decent amount of CC between them, Brumas and the Ogre Jai are really not the best heroes to keep a Slark down. Although, I'm not sure if House of Gamers need to pick up Slark this soon in the draft. I think going for the other support would have been safer. It still could work out for them, especially if Slark gets a fairly uncontested early portion of the game, transitioning into the mid-games where Slark really tends to shine when he's able to consistently keep up the aggression and get those kills. And with the Skyrath behind him, it's fairly easy to do so. As for Album Sheet, it's going to be Eventual Spirit. Yeah, so they're just going to jump 
everyone stuns onto this lark, or at least have the option to. I mean, obviously Dark Pact is very annoying when you're trying to chain stun him and he just keeps on pacting it out, but if you have enough crowd control or just high nuking damage in general, then that's a great way of dealing with the Slark. So Album Sheet, I mean, right now they're probably going to wish they had a Necrophos on their team, but you know it's a little bit too late for that, obviously. You really can't go long, wrong with the Vengeful Spirit Ogre Magi. It does Damn set them up for a potentially go. Batrider down the line, which I do like versus Slark. It is very difficult to pack seconds. if you do not see the Firefly and if you don't see the Batrider coming beforehand. Commander. As for House of Gamers, the next choice is going to be Leech Commander, presumably their third and final core, and... Probably going towards the offline as a solo hero, maybe with some support, but for the most part, Legion Commander is going to be left alone, which is fairly dangerous up against an Ogre and Venge. Pretty much anybody can just get chain stunned to oblivion if you're stuck in a 1v1 or 1v3 situation there. Um, yeah, as for Album Sheet, they could go for pretty much any hard right-clicking hero they want to. Amplifying the damage from the Venge as well as with the Ogre is always wonderful and hardly... Any, <clears throat> excuse me, safe lane carry is going to say no to that extra bit of damage as well as um, movement speed. Yeah, I mean, the press the attack is going to be huge in this sure game versus the two stuns just by themselves. Against Brewmaster, you get rid of his slow, you can get rid of his haze, I believe. So just so many ways of House of Gamers to deal with the stuns from Album Sheet. And, I mean, you could still have a good amount of burst damage, as you said, through physical eventual spirit or just magical damage in general. Ogre Magi does that pretty well just by himself. It will be very hard for Album Sheet to make any of that damage stick. And if House of Gamers pick up any sort of hero with any additional sustain, a heal, or anything as their last, like something like a Dazzle, then things get very difficult for Album Sheet to actually kill anybody. Despite the fact that they have rather high damage heroes, it just doesn't matter when you can't actually hit them. So I really like how kind of defensively offensive House of Gamers lineup is. I mean, they, ha they can go aggressive just because they won't die. Yeah, as for Album Sheet, they're going to go for a Troll Warlord. A fairly melee-heavy lineup um, they've made for themselves with the Brewmaster Ogre and Troll Lord kind of being half-ranged. Um, but still, Troll is going to benefit very heavily from Damn, the Vengeful Spirits, extra damage. There's a decent amount of pushing power coming out from these heroes. And every once in a while, you can get a Lucky Bash and maybe chain stun somebody down. But still, I'm tending to like House of Gamers lineup just a little bit better. I think it's just... Deserve time. Yeah, just really hard to pin down in place. That said... It could all change if Album Sheet have a wonderful early game, and I think a decent amount of pressure is going to be on the Ogre and Venge at the early portions to accomplish something. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit difficult for those two heroes to do so, again, because of all the ways House of Gamers have of dispelling things. With this Troll Warlord pick for Album Sheet, I'm inclined to think if Faceless Void is going to be picked up for them. I mean, if you're talking about pacting out spells and using Press the Attack to survive stuns or chain stuns whatnot, then pretty much the best way to counter that is just put them in a chronosphere. They can't do anything. Literally, they can't do nothing. So uh, I think for Album Sheet, that probably is going to be the best way for them to go. It'll make the lanes... Uh, actually, they'll, they'll still be fine. I mean, a little bit melee heavy, perhaps, but they can get away with it. And House of Gamers, well, they have no longer the option to go for the Witch Doctor, but really, with Skyrath Mage and the setup they already have right now, they could go for literally any support hero, and they should be fine. Yeah, I think that's fair. Although the Faceless Void lacks synergy with most of these heroes, Troll Lord and his ultimate plus Faceless Void is always nice to have, but outside of that, there's not really anything. I still think it would be a nice pick as well. House of Gamers, for them, I still think that either Sand King or Earthshaker are just Damn, your best bets when it comes to supports. But if they don't want to go for something along those lines, Five Rubik's seconds. available, I don't know, pretty much anything. Yeah, so they could go Reserve for... Time. I mean, with the Skyrath Mage setup... Maybe they want to go for you know someone who actually has a little bit of magic damage. Uh, Rubik is kind of light in that, but as far as getting uh, countering Album Sheet, you ha have a quick stun in the Levitate, so that's good for dealing with the Brewmaster. It won't be the worst. Uh, Legion Commander, Slark, Raze, they're all kind of high damage heroes, so you don't even have to highly prioritize the magic damage for House of Gamers. They could pick up someone who's you know almost purely utility. Uh, yeah, honestly, with the, with the lineup they have right now, obviously, you know, stuns are good and stuff like that, but hell, they could even go for something like a tree and protector, and then it'll just be impossible for Album Sheet to get kills. Right now, 20 seconds is all that House of Gamers have left to think about this last pick, and we'll see sooner rather than later what it's going to be. 10 seconds. Damn the countdown continues. Mm, yeah, I, I don't think you can really go wrong. You, you'd have to pick incredibly greedy. Wraith King? 
Well, you can work. Pick. It's it's a decent enough hero. Gives him a nice single target stun. The synergy between Scarth Mage and Wraith King is a decent. Just a play stun into Mystic Flare is always nice. A decent mix of damage as well as the ability to scale later on. I think it's okay. Although it wouldn't have been my first choice. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, lifesteal for Legion, Slark, and Razor is going to be huge since all those heroes do typically hit for a lot. And even if outside that, as you said, a stun into a Mystic Flare is pretty nice. Yeah, as House of Gamers don't really have that many other ways of setting up for Mystic Flare. Pounce is not exactly reliable, and Dueled isn't going to come up for a much longer album sheet. Well, they're going to get a last pick Venomancer, so it is going to be a little bit more of an aggressive game coming out from them. Again, up against House of Gamers, who have now picked up three melee heroes. Venomancer Slow is going to be fairly crippling, but getting rid of that with Legion or the Slark, I mean, that, no, that Gale isn't really going to do that much. So, Album Sheet, their last pick is certainly not the one that I would have expected. I thought they would have gone a little bit harder in the damage. Yeah, Venomancer, although he's going to offer a decent amount of magic damage, especially if he lands the Gale onto the like of the Scarath Mage, a lot of these heroes don't care that much, either with just ways to sustain through it, <clears throat> Leech Commander and Slark with their heals, either in Slark's ultimate just running out of vision, or Leech Commander getting off the press of the attack, Wraith King has a second life to work with, and Venomancer is kind of a one-cycle hero, and Razor just generally tanky. Outside of the Skyrath, I don't think House of Gamers are going to mine much, although he's going to be a nuisance. I think there's heroes that definitely could have hit harder. That said, we're going to get into this game and see how all of these picks work out for either team. On the Radiant side, it's going to be after... Um, album sheet, my goodness. With Afterlife handling the Venomancer, Sunlight on the Vengeful Spirit, Chomi on the Brewmaster, Ogre Magi handled by No Fear, and leading the charge for them is Aloha Dance on the Troll Warlord. And in the House of Gamers, we got Malum, who's going to be taking the Slark up towards the top lane. Faith in Strangers is going to be supporting as the Skyrath Mage, as is a moment on the Wraith King. I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. I haven't actually asked him, but it seems right. Uh, Slash Strike is going to be playing the mid lane Razor, and that leaves Sliz on the Legion Commander. Yeah, I have like actually no idea if I'm pronouncing these House of Gamers names correctly. It just feels right, and I've been doing it for a while. <laughs> I suppose so. It, it sounds... Right enough for me. I've always said Sliz is SLHZ. I think, I don't know. It, it doesn't really matter. That's quite a mouthful. Uh, currently, Album Sheet are smoked up as a five man unit walking towards the enemy jungle. They shouldn't be able to find any kills, but know, maybe they jump into the Slark. I think Malum will be safe up against this, but let's see how the chain stunning is going to work. My goodness, what a pause. All right, so if they do find the Slark right now, Slark doesn't have anything leveled up. He's going to want to have Dark Pack, but he's also going to want to have Pounce. So pretty much level 1 is the best time to pick off a Slark. Uh, they will have a Fire Blast, they will have a Magic Missile, and that's actually about it. It might buy enough time for Chomi to get in close, and they might have a Clap after that. It might be enough damage to kill him off, although I think it's going to be a little bit close. Yeah, I don't think this is a clean-cut kill. If Fire Blast lands... Magic Missile should follow up, although if they hold on to it too late, a Dark Pact or a Pounce could purge that off, and I think if neither of those, or unless they get both of them, they won't get the kill. Magic Missile hasn't been thrown up by Sunlight, they will get that stun off first. Now with the Axis follow-up, Fire Blast, Clap, and all four heroes auto-attacking, the Pounce is going to be nicely dodged by Sunlight, and Aloha Dance is going to draw first blood on the Slark. They didn't even need to open up with the Overmajai Fire Blast. And Afterlife just bailed on that, they didn't expect to get anyone there. Massive gamers. Honestly, that positioning from this Lark is not a common positioning for a random hero up on top lane. So this is uh, kind of understandable. That Afterlife left. Unfortunately for him, he's going to be out of that experience in gold range. So Venomancer gets nothing, unfortunately. But he's going to actually go to the bottom lane where there's going to be a tri lane. So he's going to continue to get nothing. So poor, poor Afterlife. But the rest of the album sheet heroes should be very happy, especially this VS, because she has an invis rune and slash strike. He did not see this one picked up. So. You know, even though the Brewmaster is very far away, No Fear is going to try to play it cool, but I think this is pretty clear to Slash Strike that something is going on. However, it gets too close. Magic Missile, Fire Blast combo, now a clap. Slash Strike is going to get beaten down. This is going to be two kills for Album Sheet. They're off to a roaring start. In the meantime, bottom lane, Venomancer, he's stunned up, and he's going to be beaten down as well. Faith in Strangers and a moment were hiding in the trees off to the right, and that's going to be a retaliation kill for House of Gamers, but still not the best of starts for them. Yeah, definitely. That was some sort of next-level gank coming out from Album Sheet as No Fear casually walks through, and Slash Strike thinks that's the only hero that's close and ends up trading hits with the Ogre, but that's enough to get the Vengeful Spirits done. And yeah, well played by Album Sheet, they're able to make good use of that early in this rune. Afterlife... <clears throat> I don't know, kind of understandably isn't going to have a good time in this lane, but now has some support, so eventually we'll be able to pick up some farm. That 
one kill on Tomb is by no means the end-all be-all. Magic Missile follow-up onto SLHZ. They don't have a Gale, just the Poison Sting and Venomancer, but it might be enough. Let's see if they're able to chase him down with Boots on No Fear. One more auto-attack available. They don't have mana for any of their stuns. Now it's cooling down from No Fear. He gets another Fire Blast, and that should secure this kill onto SLHZ. His Leech Commander is left alone. Yeah, the other two supports, I think the Legion was depending on them to circle around, but they're actually going towards the mid lane. I think Legion Commander would have been fine if she just ran straight north to her tower. I don't think Almshi had enough, but because she decided to, you know, potentially get to her supports and try to play a cute, she ended up dying. And now someone else who might end up dying is Chomi over in mid, taking quite a bit of damage. He will get the clap off, but he's being body blocked now by the Straith King. He will actually survive it. The uh, I think the Razor missed quite a few attacks there just with the Drunken Brawler. So Brewmaster is somehow going to survive that gank. There aren't many heroes that could survive it, but Brewmaster is one of the few. Yeah, between Uphill Misses and Drunken Brawler, Razor couldn't actually get any of that 56 damage that he stole into the Brewmaster. Up in top, a moment as well as Faith and Strangers are going to put their sights onto this Troll Warlord. And Aloha Dance, although in a 1v1 situation, has a pretty good time laning. If he gets caught out by the stun from the Wraith King, should fall, but... Oh, there's a ward, so that's not happening. Yeah, I mean, if the Troll Warlord died there, then it'll just be embarrassing. He's still in the area. He thinks that the enemies have backed off, but he should have seen their exact movement. So if Aloha Dance, if he is playing right at all, as long as he's not blind in both eyes, he should be fine in this situation. And while well, Albumsheet have made quite a few rotations with their supports, it looks like they are, for the most part, going to settle down on this bottom lane until Sunlight and potentially No Fear rotate out. Again, these two supports from Albumsheet, you said it before, are going to be dictating the pace of the game. And so far, they've been doing a fantastic job. House of Gamers, they're kind of trying to do the same thing. Although, with the first failed gank over in the mid lane, it's just that much more difficult. It's just wasted time. No levels or experience while that's happening. Just not the best times for House of Gamers. Though, it is really the mid game where they hit their stride. So, they're kind of okay with taking these hits early on. Yeah, for now, there's not a clear-cut victory towards either side. Album Sheet are getting the better half of the exchange. But as you said, HOG are not going to be heartbroken by the slow start. They definitely have plenty of time to catch back into this game. <clears throat> for now, the supports are going to be sitting up top. Pounce misses onto Aloha Dance, going to man fighting but gets Malum, but he didn't expect the Wraith King and Skyra to be here. Now slowed down. Fire Blast as well as Magic Missile goes the way of Faith and Strangers. Faith and Strangers is just too squishy and will be brought down as Troll Ward gets a kill. And now we have a pause as Aloha Dance runs away from the creeps, and apparently Sunlight has a phone call. <laughs> I love the thought of just Sunlight hearing the phone ring and is like, no, not now. I have to get this kill, guys. Gets the kill instantly pausing and well, Trover Warlord is not exactly the tankiest hero in the game, but with the Berserker's Rage, he's up to like 700 something health, so he can survive that onslaught of House of Gamers, and honestly, these heroes don't really put out that much damage at this stage. Wraith King, though he can put up some serious damage later on, for the early stages, he's just a walking Wraith Fire Blast, and that's only level 1 skill, so it's Troll Warlord to survive, and then even turn things around in the Scarath Mage, abusing the zero armor. Aloha Dance gets to live, and that was really perfectly baited. It was a lot closer than it really should have been for Album Sheet. If Troll Warlord played a little bit further back and, you know, waited like 3 seconds, it would have been much better for him. But he still has a salve and a tango, so he's going to get juiced up right back to full HP, and that's the fourth kill for Album Sheet. These supports are running this game for Album Sheet. They're not getting that many levels. But honestly, they don't have to. They're just buying space for the cores, and it's working out for them. Yeah, definitely. Pretty much all you need is just that level and stun for um, either of those heroes, and they're able to do quite a bit. Um, and even though they're not getting the most levels, they're getting more than the Skyrath Mage and the Wraith King. So all is good in the world of Album Sheet. And all of their solo lanes are doing reasonably well. Venomance are the slowest of them, but since he's been left alone with the Leech Commander, he's been able to catch up admirably. And even Chomi, he's outright beating the Razor mid. Like, not many heroes should be able to do this. Brewmaster is not one of the heroes that should be able to do this, but he's doing it anyway. Of course, getting the kill, certainly very nice at slowing down the Razor, but honestly, the Brewmaster should not be this far ahead. And once level 6 comes, Chomi can realistically get solo kills on a Slash Strike. If he has any sort of support from his uh, stunning support duo, then he will definitely get the kill. So. Chomi is absolutely demolishing the mid lane, and over towards bottom, Venomancer's still not having the best of times, but really, he doesn't have to be getting all that much CS, as Venomancer is more or less a budget hero. No Fear is going to try to dive up north with Aloha Dance. Malum is pretty low, only level 4, has already used Pounce, he's going to try to salve up, he's getting a lot of HP, now he's going to be a Fire Blast, he's stuck in the corner, and he will be blown up. Now Sunlight doesn't have a Magic Missile, so he's not going to be able to catch up to the Wraith King, but still, it's yet another kill for Alm Sheet, killing off a very important hero as well. And this one might end up being a tower push, it's already dropped very
very low. They time this gank perfectly with the siege creep as well as double range creeps. And the best that HOG can hope for is a deny, and they're not even close enough to attempt it. So Abumshi find themselves a free kill and a free tower. Everything seems to be working out for them. Leech Commander is getting good farm down in bottom, but it's not enough. And with the rotation from Chomi, Faith, and Strangers is completely up the river. Radiant Man, that's just phase boots up. into a clap. I mean, Brewmaster didn't even have a useful rune there. He's not even level 6. They know that they can get away with this, though, just because, well, Scarth Mage is not exactly a tanky hero, and Radiant now they're going to clear off a stack as well. It's only, you know, two easy camp stacks. Not a huge deal there, but Alvashid are just adding basically insult to injury. Like, Chomi making a rotation up to the top lane without a rune is something that not many players even would have done. I mean, phase boots are nice and everything, but without level 6 and no rune, Usually they just don't bother going up there because it'll be very rare that they actually find something, but hey, they find another kill and that Brewmaster is that much closer to his level 6. Granted, Razor already has his. The level 6 Razor is not nearly as powerful as the level 6 Brewmaster. Yeah, in all honesty, I'm not sure if that rotation is entirely worth it. I think just sitting in lane would have accomplished a little bit more, but still, um, as long as he gets the kill, it's not bad by any means. And Ogre is now sitting behind mid. The true warlord's been freed up from his lane. A regeneration rune is going to spawn behind him, and now Slash Track needs to be careful. He's going to come up for a CS. They can't really get in range very effectively with these heroes, and in the end, it's going to be some bottle charges going the way of the Loha Dance and a regeneration rune secured by Chomi. Unfortunately for both Aloha Dance and Chomi, they're like one CS away from their level 6s. They're going to get that in short order. They're going to open up in a slash strike. They have the split now, although they don't have the mana to do it. It's not even necessary. My god, that damage is absolutely absurd. Aloha Dance just lays into him. Now he has Battle Trans. This Troll Warlord I didn't notice before is 5 0 0. Afterlife on the bottom lane might be in a little trouble. That's the first duel from the Legion Commander. Will get stunned. I think this duel will fizzle. Afterlife is going to lose the duel, actually. Legion Commander barely taking that stack of damage. Much needed as well for House of Gamers but they may not make a clean escape here. Chomi's rotating in, has a split, clap is available, or just huge crit onto Faith and Strangers, almost like bringing him down half HP with one hit. That's good too. No mana even expended but there by the Brewmaster. It's a one-for-one -one trade, and though it does slightly benefit House of Gamers because they got the dual damage, Chomi is just a walking wrecking ball right now. He hasn't even used his ultimate yet. Yeah, and that's... It Incredibly scary for House of Gamers. If he finds anybody solo, he can pretty much kill them. And that next person is going to be Slash Strike, going to be opened up by the ranged axes, clap, and a crit. Er, crit, then clap. That works too. And they're going to be able to find themselves yet another kill onto this Razor, currently 0 and 3. And Album Cheat, they're just running this game despite CSing fairly evenly to the enemy team. In fact, losing in several lanes. It doesn't matter since they're able to get these many kills. A huge overwhelming odds on the No Fear, Aloha, Dance, and Chomi. They need to be careful, but Leech Commander doesn't have anything else to bridge the gap, so none of those will die. Yeah, as nice as it is to force the enemy back, I don't really think that we're going to fully commit to this tower anyway. Maybe if Brewmaster gets a split, but even if that happens, he's the only one who's actually going to do anything. They use the Battle Trance. To do not much, but it's not a large cooldown, so you might as well use it to put a little bit of damage onto the tower. There is Sunlight waiting in the wings. He is trying to wait and bait out Sliz. I don't think they know that this Legion is invisible, though, so this could end up being another one duel by the Legion Commander. She's going to start off with it. Magic Missile is there. Afterlife going to get herself a little bit more time. I think this duel is going to fizzle. It will. Now the Gale onto this Legion Commander, taking quite a bit of damage, will heal herself back up. The wards aren't going to finish the Legion. In the meantime, a moment, chasing down Afterlife. He's going to run straight into No Fear. Now the beatdown onto the Rage King, bit off way more than he could chew. Not only does the Venomancer survive, but they get a turnaround kill on an enemy support. Plus, they might get this tower as well. With Aloha Dance coming in, they certainly will. It's another huge win for Album Sheet as they will tear this tower down. Yeah, definitely. As you said earlier, Battle Trance is an incredibly low cooldown. I like seeing teams use it very liberally. There's really no reason to keep it on cooldown at all, especially when you have like Aquila, Drums. That's enough mana sustain to where that 75 mana really doesn't cost much for Aloha Dance. And now they're going to push in the tier 2 tower. They have Venomancer Wards, which I believe are maxed out, if not almost maxed out, and they are. Well, SLHC, he is going to be tagged by <clears throat> a Fire Blast. He will purge it out, um, or rather heal after the fact, but it doesn't really matter. Album Sheet committed very little to this bottom lane push, and not getting the tier 2 tower is not that bad, especially if they get a kill after the fact. Smoking up with four heroes. Mm, let's see. I think the Legion Commander smells something's up, but maybe not enough. Fire Blast opening onto the Legion, as well as the double slows coming out from the Gale, as well as the Axes. Tries to get the heal off. It's not gonna happen. She gets bashed down by Aloha Dance. The Ogre Jai gets the last hit. Yeah, I don't think the bash there really mattered, but it was just like insult to injury. Legion Commander's like, alright, I got pressed the attack on. I'm going to run away to safety. 
You can't run away to safety. You're going to get bashed because that's how the game works when you're behind. Now 11-2 to on album sheet. I mean, this is almost scarily repetition of their game number one versus Lions. And I don't think there are any ping issues yeah, now. So House of Gamers, they don't have that excuse. They're just getting demolished everywhere they go. Now the mid lane album sheet are going to set their sights. This tower already not that healthy. They're still smoked up with the VS and Troll War. They're going to try to kill off Slash Strike. That is probably not going to happen. Although with the swap, they certainly will try. With minus armor and physical damage, they will just tear down this Razor. My god, that does a lot of damage. That's a level 3 wave of terror right there. And Troll Warlord, he does some pretty serious damage with the drums, power treads. He, I mean, he's 701. At 10 minutes in, any hero with that score is going to be hitting like a truck. Definitely. And Troll Warlord, he was already on really low HP. He ate like a plasma fuel from the Razor, dropped to 200. It didn't matter. Just able to casually beat down the Razor because Troll is confident in who he is and because he's a troll. Tier 1 tower at mid is going to be taken down by Album Sheet fairly easily despite the glyph. Uh, being spent. It's going to be refreshed now for House of Gamers, but HOG, they're just not finding enough. They have one stack of damage on Leech Command, which is about as much as you can expect, but really, she's the only hero where you'd want her to be. As an offlane Legion, this is about what the Doctor ordered, but Slark is not going to have an impact for any time at all. He goes for a Midas. In this game, I just can't agree with it. It's, I don't know, late game insurance potentially and it might be able to catch them up in this game but i just don't see it happening when you have a troll that's this fat how on to faith in strangers he's going to be swapped and multicast and brought down in a heartbeat my goodness they can't find anybody else who's keeping up a poor skyrath mage yeah i didn't think they were going to get anyone there but hey they get the skyrath mage a very easy kill once you actually cancel that tp so yeah the slark the hand of midas is just pretty much a desperation move he says okay i'm going to concede the next 10 20 minutes of the game and try to take this late. And House of Gamers, honestly, if they tried to contest at this point right now, they would not get much done. So it's not really the safest move for the Slark. It's a risk that he has to take. And because of that, I can't really blame him. But a weirder item, I would say, is the Brewmaster. He's gone for a Yule Scepter first, not the Blink Dagger. I guess he will have the Blink Dagger very soon anyway, but he's going to get jumped right now. Has a split, and he will you No, he will get silenced, actually. Now the Yule Scepter going to buy him a little more time to possibly split. Yes, no, he will duel. He will get dueled, rather by the Legion Commander, and that's going to be his death. Yule Scepter, I suppose, very cute, but uh, yeah, he, I bet he wishes he has a Blink Dagger there, because Blink Dagger's pretty good on Brewmaster, I hear. Yeah, just a little bit. I like the idea behind the Yules. Really, the only thing he has to worry about to stop him from getting off uh, his split is the duel and the Skyrath Mage Silence. Maybe a Wraithfire Blast if it actually connects, but those aren't super major. Aloha Dance is being collapsed upon up in the top lane. Razor with the ultimate and a pounce from the Slark going to land, followed with the Wraithfire Blast. Aloha Dance can't get enough damage out, although he's trying to fight as much as he can. He doesn't have any lifesteal to sustain through this and won't even get the ultimate off of the moment. In the meantime, Skyrath Mage is going to die casually, I believe, just solo to Sunlight. It's kind of a similar story to what we've been seeing all this game. Skyrath Mage ends up dying. Hey, at least House of Gamers get a little bit of something. I mean, killing off a Troll Warlord was a little bit difficult previously, but over, it's not going to be free as it looks like they're going to go for Legion Commander over towards mid. Does get the heal off, but now the Magic Missile and the Slows have the swap as well. Not just no mana. The Legion Commander is barely going to escape the dots. Not quite enough. She escapes, but you know they're still going to have to make a defense over in the mid lane as Chomi does still have the split available. A Yule Scepter into a split. I guess it's like a slower combination for the Brewmaster, but... Hey, if you get an item, any item this early, it should be having a large impact. Sunlight looking for a swap into Faith and Strangers will not find it, but slowly but surely they're going to take down this tower. In the meantime, Aloha Dance does cleanse the top lane push. This is just Album Sheet, a momentary hiccup. I mean, losing the Troll Warlord and Brewmaster, obviously not the best, but they're still on track. Yeah, definitely Troll Warlord's next item of choice. It looks like it's going to be Yasha for him, and he has that completed now. Aloha Dance, if he had some lifesteal in any form... <clears throat> Vlad's or maybe just casual Morbid Mask for himself, he'd be able to man fight a lot easier. Um, but still, it's going to be a lot of damage coming out from Troll Lord, especially since he's going for a stat heavy build uh, with Eventual Spirit on his team. Only two points up in the aura up until now from Sunlight, but still, that's enough to make it very easy for them to make this troll hit very hard, especially if Bashes are involved. Roshan's going to be the next attempt coming up from Album Sheet. The sustain through this isn't the easiest, but they do have Drunken Haze to drop onto the Roshan to give him that mischance, as well as just natural tankiness coming up from the Brewmaster. And with the troll ultimate, this is a very fast Roshan as well. Yeah, getting an occasional bash certainly will help this one. They do have now a medallion on Sunlight. A little bit late, and actually didn't do anything, but... Uh, the thought is certainly there. Sunlight's going to be taking out a lot of armor from the enemies. Like, we got minus six, and then another minus six from the Howl and then the Medallion, respectively. 
Whoever is going to get hit by that and then focus down by the Troll Warlord or honestly anyone from Album Sheet, like even there's the Brewmaster regular right clicks, that is a truckload of damage. And House of Gamers, they do have some kind of tanky ish heroes with the Razor, with the Wraith King, but they're not this tanky. Like they have to be a lot tankier. And now Chomi's going to set up for the Slark, going to get in the way of the Pounds. However, to Pounds TP from Alan is going to make him just fine. It's still going to be potentially a kill on the top lane as Scarth Mage looking for a swap sunlight. Oh, I don't think he was in range or. No, I think the Wave of Terror was just... The Wave of Terror didn't give him enough vision, so no one's going to die up on top. Yeah, It's also only a level 1 swap, so I don't think the range was close. I don't know. It wasn't very clean cut that they'd get that Scarath Mage kill. And for once, he's able to make it out safely. Hmm. Our Brewmaster, he's going to go back for Yule... Um, Vladimir's offering after the Yule Scepter. It's an interesting build coming out from him. No, he changes his mind. He goes for a blink. Yeah, I, I think it's delayed, but it's still not a bad blink timing, especially considering he dropped two, um, 2,700 gold under the Eagles. Yeah, we've seen people get blink daggers about the same time, just as their first item, like arcane boots into blink dagger, and then they do they do fine. So he now has a real legit brewmaster build with the Eagle scepter attached to it. I don't know if it's going to be an agonim scepter next, or he's going to go for more of a battle build with the troll warlord and VS. He might be inclined to hit a little bit harder without relying on the split, but. Either way, they're going to demolish the top tier 2 very easily. That's the last tier 2 for House of Gamers. And now Album Sheet, they're going to look towards the high ground. It is going to be very difficult for them to do so, for sure. But they have the Aegis, and with the fresh Blink Dagger on the Brewmaster, they can actually start a fight on the high ground. Which, whereas previously, without the Blink, they would not be able to do so. Yeah, even if it's a blind Blink, Brewmaster can look for like a Blink Yules and probably still survive, even if he does get gone on. And with Venomance Rewards giving just that occasional high ground vision, it should be pretty safe for him to do so as well. Right now, Aloha Dance on the front lines, shipping away at this tower with an Aegis, doesn't really care about the overwhelming odds, despite doing a decent amount of damage, and also a Vlad's for the Troll Warlord, it's a lot more damage. Currently, it is going to be mid, where we see Slash Drag gone on by the Venge, as well as the Brewmaster, and the crits are just too much. Brewmaster secures himself a kill. Man, what a bluff by Album Sheet. They leave three heroes up to the top lane to push high ground, and they somehow get away with it. They're even going to try to turn things around and kill off Malum. They're going to get uh, no ignite as it does get pounced away from however Loa Dance looking for a bash. It won't happen, but it doesn't even matter that it won't happen. Malum's barely going to escape. He gets to live, albeit barely. And just like that, Album Sheet are right back as a five-man squad back on the top lane. Man, that was certainly a very risky move, putting just Chomi and the Venge down to the mid lane. But now Chomi's going to jump in, wants a split. That's the first split of the game, I think. It's going to bring down the Wraith King's reincarnation. Now trying to go for the Legion. I don't think he has enough damage to do that. But certainly the Wraith King is going to fall, now being beaten down by the rest of the Album Sheet squad. While the Brewmaster just messes with whoever House of Gamers wants down the front lines. Faith and Strangers, he's not tanking up to sustain this. If he does get too close, he will go down. Chomi's going to return to his main form. Now Yules himself up into the air. He has backup here. He's going to land right into a Mystic Flare. However, it's going to be absorbed by three heroes. Now Malum, he's going to hit with the Multicast Gale as well. No Fear dropping very low. Looking for a duel is Sliz, but he can't quite find it. No Fear's going to escape at 20 HP. Now Aloha Dance is going to try to duel up against the Legion Commander. He will take that one as a victory. No duel used, but either way, it's a kill for Album Sheet. They're going to chase forward for Slash Strike. Aloha Dance wants this kill. With the attack speed that he's packing, he has more than enough to take it down. He still has the Aegis, even if he does need it, but he's not going to need it. That's Rax's claim by Album Sheet. Slash Strike going to teleport right in for a Plasma Field. Still won't kill off Aloha Dance. Finally, Wraith Fire Blast does it. Malum jumps deep into the back lines. He has Shadow Dance. Might get a kill onto Sunlight, but who cares? It's Eventual Spirit. Malum is still alive, but he's going to hit with the Multicast. And then the Whirling Axes, if that lands, it doesn't even need to. He's going to go down as well. 19 to 4. Album Sheet are just laying the smack down on HOG. That's a Rax claimed and a whole bunch of kills to boot. They did not lose a single hero in that. Yeah, and it's also not only just those three kills, but Razor buys back, and the Rax is taken casually by the troll while everybody's fighting. It's a well-executed push by Album Sheet, but by the advantage that they have in this game, it's fairly easy to see that manifested in these fights. HOG could do very little to nothing. Despite experience being close for that fight, gold was not so. It's currently a 14,000 advantage towards Album Sheet. I mean, even if the gold was in favor of HOG, they're still down a Rax pre-20 minutes, which, you know, 9 times out of 10 is going to mean that you're going to lose the game within the next 5-10 minutes, unless you have some insane carrying things going on in the back lines. But Slark with a Midas Blink Dagger, he's not going to be single-handedly carrying this game, not by a long shot. Legion has two stacks of damage, which for 19 minutes into the game is pretty much where you want to be, but he is behind, so he needs to have, like, 50-plus if he really wants to be comfortable. But, I mean, other than that... What are houses of gamers working with? 
there's nothing on the Razor. Like, he doesn't even have a mech. He has, like, half of it, or less than half of it. He has nothing. Yeah, he has a headdress, and now working in towards the Black King bar, and it's going to be the mid lane. It's going to be pushed by Album Sheet. They have the Brewmaster Ultimate, and I expect this to be second verse, same as the first. They're going to pop the Glyph to delay this push, but that doesn't really matter much. Still, 20 seconds on Battle Trance cooldown, they'll probably use that to take down the Barracks, and there's just nothing. That's the gamers can do. Leech Commander is pushing bottom, has to TB back. Wraith King's pushing top. He needs to get back if they want a hope of saving these Barracks, and it's too late. They're already dead. And if you're not going to hold actually fight for the racks is what's the point they're gonna jump in with a huge overwhelming odds malin's gonna drop very low in exchange however no fear getting dueled up will get swapped out by sunlight it will be a dual fizzle right now as brewmaster is causing havoc in the back line the nova has landed on everyone as well that's good game called once again house of gamers get absolutely no one and they lose five heroes Ooh. album sheet that was a disgusting game. Like, they just demolished House of Gamers. I'm yeah, that trying was... to think of more words to say it, but I cannot think of it. <laughs> There's not very many. That was a clinic. It was just a very straightforward victory. Even though they lent overwhelming odds and dark fact onto everybody, it actually didn't matter. They had no follow-up afterwards. And Album Sheet take game number one in a very convincing fashion. That said, we still have another game coming up shortly in the Battle of Central Europe, so don't go anywhere. Game number two between these two teams coming up next.